Progressive Player of the Month of July. Now, Derek Otello will be making his National League debut. He had a record of 2 and 1 with Kansas City, but this will be his first National League start. At Iowa, he had a record of 11 wins and 7 losses. He was originally signed by the Philadelphia Phillies as a shortstop, but did not sign with the Phillies as a pitcher. So, here at Wrigley Field, it's Patello going for the Cubs. And he'll face Lenny Dykes, the leading off for the Mets, the center fielder. Batting number two, second baseman, having a fine season again with the Mets, Wally Backman. Keith Hernandez, who's been unbelievable uh, unbelievable for the month of July, at first base, batting third, batting cleanup, doing the catching, Gary Carter, Darryl Strawberry in right field, batting number five, Danny Heap in left field today, giving George Foster rests, Heap batting sixth, Howard Johnson batting seventh to third base, the shortstop, Rafael Santana in the eighth slot, and batting ninth, the pitcher, Eddie Lynch. Empires for the game today. Jerry Crawford behind home plate at first base. Lanny Harris at second base. Jerry Davis and the umpire at third base. Harry Wendelstadt. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission or other use of the pictures, descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Mets and Sports Channel is prohibited. Announcers on this telecast are selected by Sports Channel and approved by the Mets. So it's Len Dykstra stepping into the batter's box as we're about to get underway. Len hitting at 248, one home run, 15 runs batted in, and batting against Derek Botello. He spells his name B O T E L H O, making his National League debut. Cubs are strapped for pitching. They have two of their top pitchers on the disabled list. Rick Sutcliffe and also Steve Trout. And Botello's first pitch high for ball one. And the fastball hit in the air down the right field line. Keith Moreland fighting the Sunfield out in right field and he makes the play. That was interesting right there for more than just one moment. Keith Moreland didn't know where the ball was and he ran in a, in a direction of the ball and was underneath it when it came down. With this three o'clock start in Chicago, the Sunfield is definitely in right field and a very tough field to play. So now the batter will be Wally Backman. Backman hitting 287 for the year. He has one home run, 20 runs batted in. He's batted 393 against Cub pitchers this year. Wally Backman has done an outstanding job for the Mets defensively throughout the year. He's only made three errors. And Botello with those long arms misses with a fastball. He has kind of a slingshot type delivery, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. That's a good build for a pitcher. Scouts tend to go after a guy that's tall and thin, rangy. And the fastball back for a strike. One ball, one strike. Botello spending over six years in the minor leagues. Now under the gun here with the Chicago Cubs. A sort of must-win situation for the Cubs. They're seven and a half games out in fourth place. And a bouncing ball. It'll be a tough play for Larry Boy. He can't get it there in time. So Backman continues his hitting as he gets an infield base hit. Wally Backman has scored 26 runs in the last 25 ball games. Seven for seven in his last attempt to steal second base. He's doing a fine job setting the table for Keith Hernandez and Gary Carter. It was Backman with two outs in the ninth inning that set it up for Hernandez to tie the ball game day before yesterday. And the Mets went on to win it on a home run by Howard Johnson in the tenth inning. Well, that was an amazing ball game after Jimmy Fry went out and talked to Lee Smith. They had a shift on for Keith Hernandez to hit the ball the other way. They threw him a slider down and in. And he pulled it in the right field corner for the two base hit that tied the ball game in the ninth and the Mets down to their last out. Hernandez has been hitting everything that's been coming up. He's now up to 295. Player of the month of July batted 392 in July with 29 runs batted in. And in this series Keith has had five hits and 13 times up. Keith's on base percentage or on base average in July was 475. First base, Backman diving back. 
Backman with 19 stolen bases out of a total of 25 attempts. Well, he's an underrated ball player. If you look at the Mets this year, everybody said that when Darryl Strawberry came back, the Mets started to move. When Darryl Strawberry came back, Wally Backman also started to move offensively. And as I mentioned, he was doing very well defensively all year. You really have to set the stage for guys like Hernandez, Carter, Strawberry, and Foster. And that's Backman's job. Mets have won eight of their last 10 ball games and 23 of their last 30. And again, Backman diving back. Play was not close. <clears throat> Mets have been in a position of having their player selected as National League Player of the Week three of the last four weeks. Winners in July, Keith Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry. And here in this Last week, Dwight Gooden. Two balls, no strikes. One man out. Just underway here at Wrigley Field. Runner goes with a pitch. A throw by Davis is in time. And back when it's going out. Very close play at second base. Back with a good jump. Jody Davis with an excellent throw right on the money. And second base umpire Lanny Harris said he was out. Take another look at it. Another angle. It was safe. Now the tag was made too too far back on Backman. He got his feet in there before the yeah. tag, but it was an excellent throw by Judy Davis. And that'll do it. If you make a good throw and the uh, infielder can put on a quick tag. You'll get the call. And that's ball four. So Hernandez walks. And the Mets have a base runner once again. Hernandez with 58 walks. The leader in the National League is Jack Clark with 67. Dale Murphy with 62. Greg Nettles with 59. And now Keith Hernandez with 58. That brings up Gary Carter. Carter hitting at 268. 13 home runs, 51 RBIs. Carter hitting 375 against Cub pitching this year with 15 base hits, three of them home runs. And the fastball, four ball, five in a row out of the strike zone. Right there, Bethello trying to get inside on Gary Carter. So I'm sure the Cubs told Bethello to jam Carter. But if you miss up there, you have a problem. Cubs have Carter shaded as though he would be a pull hitter. And again, he's inside, and that's six in a row out of the strike zone. A fellow helped out by the runner being called out on the attempted steal. And the wind is blowing out here in Chicago today, so Gary Carter, well, he's a threat when the wind's blowing in, but with the wind blowing out, he's even more of a threat. First three games of the series has only been one home run hit. And that won a game for the Cubs, the first game of the series. It was hit by Gary Matthews. First two games of the series and wind blowing in yesterday it was blowing out but Gooden was on the mound that stops a lot of hitting and now here today on another humid day it is blowing out the wind from the southwest two and one Carter fouls it off two and two Carter in this series three hits and 13 times up he has driven in one run. Drove in the only run for the Mets in the first game of the series when they lost it by a score of two to one. They won the second game five to four in ten innings. Won the third game four to one in regulation time yesterday. And another foul ball. And the count stays at two balls and two strikes. With a total of 78 home runs, the Cubs have hit more. The Cubs have hit 84 home runs. The Cubs with a 246 team batting average. The Mets with a 245 team batting average. And it's inside, and the count goes to three and two. So a full count. Fernandez at first base will be running with a pitch. This is an interesting situation. Bethello, as you look at Jim Fry, Bethello really doesn't know Gary Carter, or Gary Carter really doesn't know him. Patello's been educated by his teammates, managers, and coaches. And it's ball four. That puts runners at first and second base. <clears throat> so 
So Bothello off to a shaky start here. He's given up an infield hit. That was erased on the attempted steal. Now two walks in a row and it brings up Daryl Strawberry. I think Bothello right now is going through an intimidating stage when he faces guys like Hernandez, Carter, Strawberry, probably trying to make the perfect pitch, consequently missing and getting himself into a major hole. And Strawberry goes after the first one, strike one. Darrell hitting 249 for the year with 12 home runs, 36 runs batted in. Hitting only 182 against Cub pitchers this year. Two men away, runners at first and second. And the breaking ball just outside, one ball, one strike. in this series has had two hits in the 11 times up. The Mets have not had a home run as we mentioned. Four game series. And that one outside. Two balls in one strike. Cubs have been tough to beat at home. They have won 11 series here at Wrigley Field. They have lost three. One to St. Louis, one to San Francisco, one to L.A. And they have split two. In these games at the 3 o'clock start out here, they have a losing record, 8-9. and nine. Two is Strawberry with a count of two balls and two strikes. Mets in day ball games 23 and 16. The Cubs in day ball games 34 and 33. One game over 500. Cubs at home 30 and 20. The Mets at home 34 and 18. And it's foul tip, so the count stays at two and two. Two with runners at first and second. Two men out top of the first inning. Hot, sultry day in Chicago. Now Strawberry asks for time. Both these clubs have played a lot of one-run ball games. And Strawberry lines it foul down the left field side. The Mets in one-run ball games. They have played 45. They have won 24 and lost 21. The Cubs have played 36 one-run ball games. They have won 20 and lost 16. I think the players are playing this ball game here and also with an ear towards New York when negotiations are still underway. Strawberry drills at the right field. Moreland back. He can't get it. And it's out of the wall. Park. And the Mets are leading three to nothing. And Strawberry has a three-run home run. Well, Daryl Strawberry will take a big ball park and make it a small ball park with his power. Today, the wind blowing up. That ball would have been over most walls throughout the National League. That ball was stalled it off the bat of Daryl Strawberry. Another look. Ball just jumps off his bat. I'll tell you, that was a line drive over the fence. The fence about 370 feet from home plate. Strawberry picking up his 13th home run, his 37th, 38th, and 39th. Runs batted in, and it brings up Danny Heap. Danny hitting 275 for the year. And the fastball, strike one. Well, the two walks coming ahead of the home run, doing in Derek Fothello here in the first inning. That's a tough start. He just cleared irrevocable waivers coming back into the major leagues at 3 o'clock today. And the count, one ball, one strike. All the clubs had to wave on him, so he could come back up into the major leagues and play for the Cubs. He was with Iowa, the Cub Farm Club. And a slider lined into right field, a base hit. Danny Heap is on. I'm sure Patel right now a little bit shell shack. He knows he got himself in trouble by trying to be too fine with Keith Hernandez and Gary Carter. And then he got to face Daryl Strawberry, who quickly put the Mets on the board with three runs. So Patello pitching from behind. Then he gave up a base hit right there to Danny Heap. And it brings up Howard Johnson. Howard hitting 225 with seven home runs, 28 RBIs, his seventh home run. Won a 10 inning ball game for the Mets in this series. 
And he wasn't supposed to be in that ball game. Ray Knight left the game with an injury. How many times has that happened, Ralph? Happens when you're going good. Boy, it does. And that went off the glove of Davis. He starts to go now. After stopping, moves on down to second. That'll be a pass ball. Without a doubt. And Jody Davis would tell you, I should have caught it. Ball was moving away from the batter, Howard Johnson, also moving away from Jody Davis' glove. It hit off the webbing of the glove. That'll happen occasionally when you're not used to catching a certain pitcher. You take for granted the ball's going to do something, and it doesn't, or it catches you by surprise, and it does something as Jimmy Fry goes out to talk to the right-handed. Right he might be telling him, let's pitch carefully to this fellow and stay in the ball game, and if you do walk him, it won't hurt. Right now, I'm sure Jimmy Fry just trying to calm the right-hander down. He's had some major league experience. He's pitched eight games in the American League. Yeah. And then he went back down to the minor league, so I guess you really wouldn't have your confidence pitching the major leagues, and now he's got to pitch in a, as you mentioned, a very big game, Ralph. He's in a tough spot here before a big crowd. Cubs are just hanging on in this National League pennant race. They have three clubs ahead of them, which makes it even tougher, and they trail the Cardinals by seven and a half, the Mets by seven. And they trail Montreal by three. One old pitch, and it's a high curveball. He didn't tell him to throw that. <laughs> Johnson one for four in this series but that one hit a home run that won a ball game and the fastball fouled off Davey Johnson orchestrating this Met ball call he's doing a fine job using using and keeping Howard Johnson and Ray Knight sharp both Johnson and Ray Knight have picked up in their hitting after a miserable start by both men keep the runner at second base two men out and a check swing line drive to Ron Say, and that'll do it. But the Mets come up with three big runs on a free run home run by Darrell Strawberry. They had two other hits, and they leave one. And the score at the end of one half inning, the Mets three, and the Cubs coming up. And he has a record of eight and five, an earned run average of 2.90. This is his 20th game start. He's had five complete games this year, one shutout. He's worked 133 in third innings, giving up 122 hits, walking only 19 while striking out 42. Ed Lynch going for the Mets. And he'll face Bob Neer leading off for the Cubs, then Ryan Sandberg, Gary Matthews, Keith Moreland batting cleanup. Richie Hebner batting number five, Jody Davis the catcher batting six, Ron Say batting seventh, Larry Boa batting eighth, and Derek Patello the pitcher batting ninth. In the background, the music here at Wrigley Field, center fielder. Credence Clearwater Revival's lead singer, John Fogarty, is singing that song. Ralph, do you do any dancing to that music? What else do you do to it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> John, it is John Fogarty. Well, Bob Denier to be the leadoff batter against Ed Lynch. Lynch with a lifetime record of 6-2 and two against the Cubs. One of those victories this year. And Denier inserted in the lineup in place of... Davy Lopes, who has a injured Achilles tendon, the near off a foot operation that he had earlier this year, spending a lot of time on the DL. He said the key to Denier's success, or the way he can help this ball club, is obviously defensively, but also by getting on base and running. They said he hasn't been able to run because of the problem with his leg. He brings a 246 average to the plate with no home runs, 14 RBIs. He has 20 stolen bases and 26 attempts. And the fastball fouled off, and it's one ball and one strike. The near has appeared once against the Mets in this series. That was as a pinch hitter, and he did not get a hit. His only appearance against the Mets this year. He was a big cog for the Cubs last year over from the Philadelphia Phillies and doing very well. Well, he had an excellent year with the Cubs last year. And a good breaking ball by Ed Lentz in the count one and two. Last year he batted 278. So 
12 and 32 RBI. So he had 32 RBIs, but he had 45 stolen bases. He was 18 for 18 in stolen bases before he was finally thrown out in the major leagues. So he has that kind of speed. He lays off that breaking ball in the count. Two balls, two strikes. I remember when he came up as a herald at Baltimore with the Philadelphia Phillies, and then all of a sudden last year, after at the end of spring training, they were going to send him to the minor leagues. Dallas Green, the general manager here in Chicago, got him in a trade. And the breaking ball fills the count out three and two. The near at one time tried to be a switch hitter. In fact, he was terrible batting left-handed, and he finally gave it up. It's not that easy. 3-2 pitch. And hits that ball right off that injured foot. Boy. You're talking about that switch inning as Dernier hobbles away from home plate to get his composure. The guy that really stands out in my mind that took up switch hitting at a late date in his career, he did it towards the end of his minor league career and has been so proficient in the major leagues, Eddie Murray. I mean, he just hammers the ball from the right side and the left side, hits for a high average, drives in a lot of runs, and started like in double-A AA or triple-A ball. He's the only man to have more game-winning RBIs than Keith Hernandez in Major League Baseball. That stat is a new stat. It hasn't been in use long enough to take up players like some of the great RBI men that have played this game. There's a drive foul down the left field line. Count remains at three balls and two strikes. Joe DiMaggio, the best RBI man in baseball history, driving in the most for an average. He averaged 118 per season. Well, he was something else. 3-2 pitch. Hard ground ball right at Santana. And a throw to first. When you take the average of Willie Mays and say Hank Aaron, who has the most RBIs in the history of baseball, they didn't even make it into the hundreds as an average. And you got Joe DiMaggio with 118. Well, you mentioned the name. Today I was thinking about it with all these plateaus being reached by certain players. Peru yesterday is 3,000 hit. Tom Seaver, 300 victory. Phil Nico's going after his 300 victory. You look at Hank Aaron, the most home runs ever by a major league player, and he's third in hits. And number one in at bats as a player, but boy, he had some kind of career. Now the batter is Ryan Sandberg. He attempts a bunt. It looks like a good one. Johnson has it to throw to first base and in time. Howard Johnson coming up with a good play to take Sandberg out of action. Well, Howard Johnson has had some fine moments defensively for the Mets. Mets management felt the big surprise was his defense. They think he's done an outstanding job defensively. Another angle. Tough play, but he executes this very well. And of course, Keith, Keith Hernandez with the stretch. Sandberg hitting 293 before that out with 15 home runs and 39 RBIs. So two men away, the Mets leading 3 0, and Gary Matthews the batter. Matthews hitting 232 for the year with eight home runs and 22 runs batted in. And the first pitch is strike. Lynch has averaged 1.28 walks per nine innings. That's fifth in the major leagues. Dennis Eckersley, number one, at 0 0.94. He has averaged less than one walk per nine innings. Eddie Lynch with that great control. Fields his position well. He does a good job. Also an excellent bench jockey. Every team has one. Eddie Lynch does a great job at it. Something that's sort of a lost start today in baseball. You used to have a whole bunch of them on the bench. Eddie's very good. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, pretty good. Huh? Oh, I'll tell you, when I get down there to do that uh, post game show, I have the opportunity to, while I'm waiting there, to listen to the guys on the bench. And Eddie Lynch is one of the better at uh, sitting on a bench and getting on some players. He also uh, is really in the trivia. Baseball. Baseball sure. trivia, right. He follows the baseball history very well. Here's a one-two pitch, and it's a high slider in the count, two balls and two strikes. Matthews, two for ten in this series, hitting 222 against Met pitching this year. And the slider fouled away, and the count stays at two and two. Lynch missed two turns because of a stomach disorder. 
His last time out, he pitched just five innings and was a winning pitcher and won his eighth game of the year. Roger McDowell finished the game for him as the Mets won it. McDowell picking up a save, working four innings. So the Mets still have not found out whether Ed Lynch has totally recovered from his stomach ailment and also has his endurance back. High pop up and Keith Hernandez says to Backman, you take it. Backman with the glasses down, makes the catch and the Cubs go on order. And the score at the end of one, the Mets three and the Cubs nothing. Now to the top of the second, the Mets leading by a score of three and nothing on a three run home run by Daryl Strawberry, the first home run for the Mets in regulation nine innings. Mets had one other home run when Albert Johnson homered in the 10th inning to win a ball game. And the batter for the Mets will be Rafael Santana. Mets sent seven men to the plate in the first inning, picking up three runs on three base hits. There were also two walks. Santana hitting 249, and Derek Botello with a fastball fouled off. Botello making his first National League start, first National League appearance. He did appear with Kansas City, was in eight ball games for Kansas City with a record of two and one. Coming up from the Cubs number one farm club, Iowa, with a record of 11 and 7. Santana with a home run and also 20 RBIs in the batter's box. He's 0 for 6 against the Cubs in this series. And the fastball, one ball, one strike. A good fastball right on the outside corner at the knees. One and two. Slider grounded to the third baseman, Ron Say. It's a fair ball, a very weak throw to first base. And Santana beats it out. So Santana hustling down the line gets a base hit. Well, when you hit a ball like this, you know there's a chance for base seat. You hustle even a little more and says throw, as Ralph mentioned, a little weak as he bounces the ball over there. Santana getting out of the box quickly. Ron Say making the catch and the throw. Well, supposedly, everybody's talking out here that the left side of the Cub infield, if they have a shortcoming, it would be they don't have that much range. Two veterans at third base and shortstop, Larry Boa and Ron Say. That brings up Ed Lynch, who's in a bunting situation. He takes a strike. You can see when a ball is hit on this infield grass, even when it's smoked off the bat, once it hits that grass, it really slows down a great deal. Grass is very tall to help out the infielders for the Cubs. Awful, awfully tough on the hitters. Yeah, and you know, Ralph, it's interesting. It has to be a tremendous benefit to a guy like Sandberg, who's a great second baseman to begin with. And he's getting the benefit of that high grass. Allows him to get to more balls than he normally would be able to get to. He feels many of the ground balls out on the outfield grass that are hit in the hole. And Lynch takes again this one out of the strike zone. One ball, one strike. Lynch has had three hits this year and 34 at bats. and foul off to the right side. The count at one and two, and Lynch checking to see whether or not he'll be bunting with a one-two count. For those of you just new to baseball, if you bunt the ball foul with two strikes, you are automatically out. When did they start that? You didn't know about that, huh? No. And now two and two. That'd be interesting. When did that rule start? I long, know. long time ago. Of course, it was put in to keep a batter from bunting the ball constantly foul and worrying out the pitcher. He's bunted foul for about 100 times. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that'd be an interesting thing, wouldn't it? Drive the pitcher crazy. And it's bunted fair. A good bunt by Lynch. Ebner fields and throws to Sandberg and on the sacrifice, Santana in scoring position. You're never surprised when Eddie Lynch executes this sacrifice because he's very good at it. 
and as Ralph mentioned with the one and two count, he put the ball in play. Not only put it in play, but it was an excellent sacrifice. And it brings up Len Dykstra, flat out to right field, his second pitch, his first time up. Earlier today, the Cubs pitchers were out here, and the pitching screen was down, and they were bunting prior to taking batting practice. Santana, the runner at second. The Mets leading 3 0 as they bat here in the top of the second inning. And the ball hit in the air down the left field side. Gary Matthews over to make the play. And Santana back to second. So two men away. And then we'll bring up Wally Backman. Botello has some pretty good hobbies. He says he likes to fish, he likes to sail, and he likes going to the beach. I never thought the beach would be a hobby. Where do you think he lives? On the beach. Right. In Florida. Okay, it's a hobby. So he's in a good spot. You gotta stay out of that sun, though, with all the uh, physicians in this country saying you can pick up some skin cancer. That is true. You gotta wear that protective sunblock. Number 15. <laughs> and there's the curveball that's over and it's a strike call. You're not a sun worshiper. Mm. I just love the sun. Do you? Out by the pool every day? Not by the pool so much. Playing baseball? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously you would love the sun there, but I'm talking about laid out by the pool. How about golf? Yeah. One ball, one strike. Unless you play night golf. Not too many courses have lights these days, though. Not regulation size. Santana at second base. The Mets leading 3 0. Two men out, top of the second inning. Interesting to watch while he's backman in batting practice. He hits the ball right back to the, to the pitcher's screen. And this one hit to Sandberg at second base. An easy play for him. Yeah. And that retires the side. So the Mets retired the Cubs in order in the first inning. Now working to Keith Moreland. Batting 288. Eight home runs, 53 runs batted in. And a swing and a miss, strike one. More than the player representative for the Chicago Cubs. For the ball game, he was surrounded by reporters asking Ambush. him questions. Well, they were hammering them, weren't they? They really were. Keith Hernandez of the Mets, the player representative. Ground ball over the Love of Ed Lynch, but Backman has plenty of time against Moreland, who cannot run well, and Backman picks up the out. Thinking back to last year in a day like today, Moreland and Eddie Lynch get into a physical altercation right there on the mound. <laughs> Lynch hit Moreland with a pitch, hit him in the thigh with a ball. Moreland charged the mound when he got out there, he didn't know what to do. That's right. Well, I'll tell you, that'll happen to you. I can assure you, happen to be. I get out this. What am I doing out here? Tried to tackle it. Yes. Morning, an outstanding football player. <laughs> now the batter is Richie Hebner, a grave digger in the offseason. And he fouls off the first pitch. And he is a low ball hitter. Oh, yes. I mentioned the other day, he was a great scholastic hockey player in the Boston vicinity. They take their hockey seriously on the high school and college level there. And I think one of the reasons he's such a good low ball hitter is because he played so much hockey. Batting 271 for the year with one home run, 18 RBIs, and ball one. One ball, one strike. And how many hockey, how many hockey pucks do you encounter that are waist high or chest high during the season? Got that good low ball swing. Always has been a fine hitter and very, very tough down low. One ball, two strikes. He's having a great year as a pinch hitter. Of course, they kept him around as a pinch hitter and a backup player. He's leading uh, the league in RBIs as a pinch hitter with 11. Of course, right now, Ron, or Leon Durham is out with back spasms, and Richie Hebner filling in at first base. Hebner ejected from a ball game, protesting a strike call in this series. Fastball inside, and the count, two balls, two strikes. That was funny. That was Saturday, late in the game. And while he was arguing with the umpire, Jim Fry came out to try and break it up. And Richie Hebner wouldn't listen to him, so Jim Fry just turned around, walked back in the dugout. Let him stay out there yelling and screaming. He was kicked out in that tie ball game, the one extra innings. And then yesterday, Jody Davis was ejected for protesting a strike call. 
Foul ball. The count stays at two and two. Ebner, a fine fielding. I was going to say fine fielding third baseman. Actually, he was not a fine fielding third baseman, but a good third baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates as he was always tough with that bat. You would look at him as a guy that played the hot corner because he probably stopped a lot of balls with his chest and his forehead and just picked it up and threw it to first. And the fastball top down to the first baseman, Keith Hernandez. No chance there as Keith comes up with it. Two men away. Five in a row for Ed Lynch. And he'll now be pitching to Jody Davis. Hitting 231, nine home runs, 41 RBIs. Davis missed a lot of time because of a stomach ailment. He missed a lot of action in baseball in the minor leagues because of ulcers. And the fastball a strike. Davis one for 14 against the Mets this year with no runs batted in. One strike. Davis, one time the property of the New York Mets and one time the property of the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals drafted him off the Mets and the Cubs drafted him off the Cardinals. Mm, good slider. One and two. You can get an all-around catcher like Jody Davis. He's worth his weight in gold. He gives you a lot of power behind the plate. He really came into his own last year when the Cubs went on to win the Eastern Division. Best home run hitter the Cubs have had since Gabby Hartnett. Gabby Hartnett. He was supposed to be a great one. Great thrower, too. And another one out of the strike zone, two and two. I guess the other catcher here in Chicago who left an imprint is... Randy Hundley, who really started the one-handed catching. Remember, he was criticized severely for it, but he saved a lot of broken fingers over the years by guys emulating his style. Of course, the new glove lends itself to catching one-handed. And that one just, just low. If you watch Gary Carter with a man with nobody on base, he can hide that meat hand because he doesn't need it because he can use that glove and catch the ball one-handed. With the old gloves, no break in the glove, you needed that meat hand out there so you could smother the ball with the meat hand once it hit the glove. And the fastball hit the center field. And Dykstra right there, and Dykstra makes the play, and that's six in a row for Ed Lentz. The score at the end of two, the Mets three, and the Cubs nothing. Well, the rate that was down in yesterday's ball game disappearing with the blue skies up above and we're going now to the top of the third the Mets leading three to nothing you know Grant talking about Randy Huntley as a catcher for the Cubs he holds the record for the most games caught in the season he caught 160 out of 162. Well I'll tell you that's durability right there either that or you have a poor backup catcher on the team. He also holds a record for the fewest errors by a catcher in the National League made only four errors in 1967 in 152 games. America League record is no errors in 117 games by Buddy Rosar. He was a uh, Randy Hundley was a good player and he did a fine job. He was one of the first catchers I've ever seen do a sweep tag and once again because of the glove he was able to catch the ball tag the runner and then come out and be ready for something to happen on the other bases. Well, he did a fine job here in Chicago. You mentioned Gabby Harden, and I just heard stories about him. In fact, he was signed to a professional contract by a guy from my hometown and uh, who has since passed away, but he told the people there that this guy had one of the best throwing arms he's ever seen, Gabby Harden. Had a lifetime batting average of 297 as a catcher. Hit 236 home runs. And now Keith Hernandez, the batter, and Keith takes a fastball. Keith walked on four pitches his first time up. Of course, the most famous home run Gabby Hartnett ever hit, the home run hit in the dark here at Wrigley Field in 1938. This ball hit out to deep right center field going back as Denier. Can he get to it? He can. Bob Denier taking an extra base hit away from Keith Hernandez. 
I thought this ball had a shot at going into the seats in center field. And this guy has been sorely missed by the Cubs there. Neil, he didn't really have to jump right there, but he looked nice doing that. And he braced himself at the wall. The Cubs really missed his defense. Davey Lopes has filled in sporadically for Denier, but having a fine year with the Cubs, but not the, quite the defensive center fielder that Denier is. Doesn't have the range, even though he can run. And with one away on the catch by Denier, it brings up Gary Carter. Carter walking on a 3-2 pitch his first time up. Talking about Gabby Hartnett's home run in the dark. It was in 1938 against the Pittsburgh Pirates and knocked the Pirates out of a chance to be the National League champions. Mace Brown was the pitcher. Homer in the gloaming. Homer in the gloaming, they called it. And if Mace, Mace Brown had rolled the ball up to the plate, the game would have been called, but he threw a strike and it was wow. hit out of the ballpark. How he even saw the ball is a miracle. It was that dark. Saw Mace Brown at Cooperstown. He was a fine pitcher. Did you mention that, Homer? Imagine this indelible on his mind. Probably a sore spot. Cost the Pittsburgh Pirates thousands of dollars. You remember Forbes Field and that upper deck at the top where they that they built on? They built that on for the supposed 1938 World Is Series game. Right? Never yep. took place. That was a nice ballpark in Pittsburgh. A lot of people feel if they stayed in that ballpark, they'd still be drawing pretty good. High pop-up by Carter down the right field line. Sandberg is out there, and he makes the catch. So two men away. Mets leading three to nothing on Strawberry's home run, and here comes Darrell for the second time. Strawberry hit a rope off of Derek Botello. Line shot in the right center field for his 13th home run. It came with Hernandez and Carter on base. Oh, the sky's the limit for this guy. He has all the talent in the world. Heard an announcer here in Chicago say that he's not the fastest in that, but he can steal a base. This guy can fly. Daryl Strawberry can really motor. You're kidding. Yeah, I heard that. Guy didn't do his homework. No. I haven't matched Strawberry with anybody. Anybody in the league in a 100-yard dash. Ooh. First pitch of ball. 220, he'd beat everybody, I think. Yes. Once he gets it in gear. And there is a breaking ball over, a strike one and one. Botello had a 2-2 two -two count on Strawberry when he hit that line shot out of the ballpark. Right over the 368 mark in right center field. And that's the same pitch he hit out. He wanted to see if he could do it again. So Botello tried to say, I want to see if you can do it again. <laughs> it's interesting to watch some pitchers after they give up a home run. Usually during that game, they are reluctant to throw that same pitch to that same batter. Eddie Lopez said he always came right back with the same pitch that the batter hit out. He says it surprised them. And Eddie was a great one. And a line shot in the center field. The near looking, it is going, and it is gone. Goodbye. Strawberry with a second home run and another landmarker. I'll tell you, the ball just explodes off of Daryl Strawberry's bat. He has that ball into the green seats in center field, and he's putting on a show here at Wrigley Field. Stay right in your seats because this guy has a couple more at-bats today. In two at-bats, he has two home runs and four RBIs. A Daryl Strawberry home run. You're getting another look at it right now into the bleachers. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, all kinds of talent. 13 and 14 for Daryl Strawberry. The Mets leading four to nothing. And the batter coming up is Danny Heap. If you're a Mets fan, you keep in mind that the Mets have an outstanding club this year. They have Carter, Hernandez, Strawberry, Gooden, Foster. But they've got Gooden and Strawberry for how many more years? Danny Heap singled behind Strawberry's home run in the first inning. Now batting for the second time in the fastball for strike one. Danny hitting 275. The Mets have two, well, right now, more than two drawing cards, but two guys that could really put people in the seats for years to come, Strawberry and Gooden. And the count goes to one ball and one strike. He's making his ballpark look like a Little League park. 
It's interesting to watch Denier go back. He started back and then just stopped. He knew that ball was in the center field seats. I'd like to see four home runs in this game by Strawberry. I think the last time they had four home runs in this ballpark was Mike Schmidt and Tim McCarver was here for that one. Hit his fourth home run in the tenth inning to win the ball game. It was 23 to 22, I think, the score. 18 to 16. 18 to 16, Tim says. Other pitchers do. <laughs> Ten innings. Ten inning ball game, 18 to 16. Danny, he pitched it high in the air to right field. Moreland back to the warning track, and he has room, and he makes the catch. So two. Second home run for Daryl Stiberry. The Mets get one run on the one hit. Leave none in the score at the end of two and a half innings. The Mets four, and the Cubs nothing. Well, if you're playing, it was Mike Schmidt, April 17, 1976. In the National League, it's been done one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven times. In the American League, it's it's only been done, it's been done eight times in the National League. And in the American League, it's only been done three times. And the first to do it was Lou Gehrig, right? Yep. And Rocky Calavito did it. And Patrick Siri. Pat Siri did it in extra innings. I remember the time he did it. Big strong looking hitter. Now Ron Say the batter. And Ron Say takes the first pitch for ball one. Say with a 12 game hitting streak hitting 355 over the 12 games. You hit three home runs a number of times. And I hit four home runs in succession but over two games twice. Is that right. Did you split over two games. What stopped you from doing it one game. Never got up enough. I like the moment we hit three home runs in a game. Rounded out to the shortstop last time up and they booed you. Happened in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. The count to Ron Say. Say four for 11 in this series. And boy, he's hitting well as an average, but nothing at all in the home run department or in the RBI department. One home run in his last 49 games, two runs batted in his last 45. This ball hit down to Johnson, who knocks it down. He has some time, and he gets Ron Say. That's why they call it the hot corner. A lot of balls you'll knock down at third base, but you still have the opportunity to throw the runner out at first. You can do it at third, you can do it at second, you can do it at first, but shortstop, if you knock it down, 95% of the time you gotta eat it. So one away, and that brings up Larry Boyle. Or a switch hitter. Batting 242 for the year with no home runs, 13 RBIs. And the fastball for ball one. And Bull fouls off a of fastball. Johnson, the manager of the New York Mets, enjoying a 4 0 lead here in Wrigley Field, but with the wind blowing out, four runs is not a lot. And Boa pulls it foul down the first base side. I think David Johnson was a manager who's greatly underrated. He's done a tremendous job last year and again this year with the Mets. He was runner-up to Jim Fry, the manager of the Cubs, as the manager of the year. Johnny Mize hit three home runs in the game six times. That's the all-time high. Ernie Baggs did it four times. I did it four times. Deb Williams did it three times. High pop up to shallow center field. Dykstra makes the call and the catch. So two men away. That'll bring up the pitcher. After hitting that first home run in the ball game, Ralph, I'm surprised more guys haven't really hit two or three in the game because they would be even that more, more relaxed. But I guess it can work the other way where they can probably swing a little bit too hard and do some things mechanically wrong at the plate. 
Well, of course, those pitchers get awfully leery after a while. Yeah, yeah. Kingman hit three home runs in the game five times. So he has a shot at tying Johnny Mize, the all-time leader. Kingman, of course, he'd be a real street kidder, wouldn't he? Mm. One thing he had going for him, which is a real asset, you could strike him out a lot, so people will challenge him. That's right. So he'll get the opportunity to swing the bat. Well, he can he could look foolish on a one pitch and the same pitch hit the ball nine miles. Ground ball. Othello grounding out to Santana and tossed out. So Ed Lynch has retired his first nine batters in this ball game. The score at the end of three, the Mets four and the Cubs nothing. Chicago Cubs cover to go to the top of the fourth inning, four nothing. Daryl Strawberry has driven in all four runs with two home runs. He's been the bat twice. He's hit a home run to right field and center field. Now leading off for the Mets, Howard Johnson. He'll be followed by Rafael Santana, then Ed Lynch and slipping into the booth. Tim McCarver, a beautiful afternoon. Great day for a ball game. And Daryl Strawberry has a chance to make a memory, Tim. Well, a couple of home runs and two at bats, but that third and fourth home run is going to be tough, but anything can happen in this ballpark. I'll tell you that with that wind blowing out. The interesting thing about his two home runs, he didn't get them up high enough for the wind to affect them. And Howard Johnson takes strike one. By the way, Babe Ruth with his 714 home runs, you mentioned two home runs in one game, has the record. He's done it. He did it 72 times. Mm. Number two is Willie Mays. He did it 63 and Hank Aaron 62 times. So that's nice company as Howard Johnson swings through a fastball. No balls, two strikes. Howard Johnson his first time up line to third base. So he's 0 for 1. Switch hitting third baseman of the New York Mets. He was the hero in Saturday afternoon's game with two out in the 10th inning. Hit a home run. And the Mets went on to beat the Cubs. And the ball's popped up out of play. Get a look at the crowd here at Wrigley Field. No ball, two strike count on Howard Johnson. Derek Patello, who's on the mound for the Cubs, was brought back to the major leagues through irrevocable waivers today and finds himself in a real big ball game for the Cubs. Cubs seven and a half behind the Cardinals in the Eastern Division. The Mets trail the Cardinals by a half game. Ball has popped up. It'll stay in play. Jody Davis looked for help, and now he's going to pursue it. I like it. Patello makes the catch. Well, he should have called the ball right away. Jody Davis had no chance to catch that ball. Richie Hebner at first base was playing too deep to have a chance at it. But Tella should have made the play in a minute. Most but he pitchers, hesitated. Yeah. And most pitchers shy away from it for some reason. A lot of pitchers are good athletes. <laughs> and okay. However, it did not take a good athlete to catch no, that ball. No, no, <laughs> But you see a lot of pitches. As soon as the ball goes up, they go the other way. Yeah. Four guys come on. They, they trip over the rubber catching the ball. But anyways, one out. Rafael Santana, the batter. He reached first on an infield hit his first time. What a hop of fellow's glove. So Rafael Santana with his second hit. Now, it would have taken a good athlete to catch that <laughs> ball. This is a BB right back through the box. Now look at the glove of Botello. It goes one way, the ball goes a little farther. This ball hit like a shot, catching the web of that <laughs> glove, and it helicopters out there, and the ball goes one way, the glove goes the other. And Santana went a different way. He's on first base, and the batter will be Eddie Lynch, who sacrificed his first time up. If Patello threw that glove on purpose, it had been a three-base hit for Santana, but obviously he didn't. There's a ball bunted foul. And a question, what if it's stuck in the glove? <laughs> we'll find out. I tell you, if you, throw the, if you throw the glove at the ball, it's automatically three bases? Yeah. That's a, a batted ball. If you throw your glove at a thrown ball, it's two bases. Yeah, right. 
But that does not answer the question of what if the ball sticks in the glove? What will happen if the ball sticks in the glove, the glove goes out on the grass? Helicopters, as you said it so well, did look like a helicopter. One out, and Santana's checked at first base. Well, what happens? I would say he's safe. If you throw your glove at the ball and the ball lodges no, in the no, glove. No, no, uh, no, on that particular, <laughs> no, you're not going to throw your glove at this one. Uh, as Ed Lynch takes a ball, one ball, one side. On that particular play, if the ball stuck in the glove, the glove is knocked out of his hand. Oh, I see what you mean. It knocked, uh, well, it's a catch, I'd say. I would say he's safe. Am I right or wrong? It depends on whether the ball sticks in the glove before it goes off his hand or not. That's what I would say. Well, the, as Santana breaks your second, hey, interesting. Eddie Lynch, once again, laying down a perfect bunt, so he's two for two as far as sacrifice bunts are concerned. Obviously, no official at bat, and Rafael Santana's on second base, two outs. Is that what you'd say? What I would say is if the, that particular play, when the ball hit into his glove and it knocked his glove off his hand, right. and the glove landed on the ground, I would have to say it's safe, the runner would be safe because I think the glove would have to be attached to part of the body of the, uh, the player, but you would have a legitimate gripe if you said it at one time it was attached to uh -huh. his hand. Mm -hmm. And Lenny Dykstra, the batter, fouls the ball out of play, one strike. Well, I was aware of that uh, particular rule when you threw the glove at a batted ball. But the interesting one is if you throw your glove at a thrown ball, it's two bases. Remember as kids, you know, you would throw the ball, you throw your glove at the ball, and they say, that's three bases. I used to throw my glove at the ball because I didn't catch the ball. <laughs> that's right. I'd get mad. <laughs> Lenny Dykes to the batter, no ball, one strike count. He takes the strike two, 0 oh 2. Two outs, beautiful afternoon here in Chicago. Especially beautiful for Darryl Strawberry. He's been up twice, he's got two home runs. And Dykstra going the other way, but back into the crowd, not a play. So the count remains, no balls and two strikes. We have a 4 nothing ball game through three here at Wrigley Field. I mentioned that Red Sox promo coming out of the commercial. Wade Boggs now leading the American League in batting. Batting 354. Rumors earlier in the year, and I'm sure they were just rumors that you know they would have traded Wade Boggs. I'm sure they would reconsider now as Dykstra pulls the ball foul. Count stays 0-2. Lenny Dykstra doing an outstanding job filling in for Mookie Wilson. Coming into today's action, Lenny Dykstra's Mets 61 and 41, a half game on top, on checked as 61 and 42, a half game behind the St. Louis Cardinals. Cubs seven and a half back. Montreal Expos in third place, four and a half behind the Cards. Cardinals tonight will take on the Philadelphia Phillies. In St. Louis. The Cubs go to St. Louis for a series after this one with the Mets. In the Western Division, the Dodgers on top of the Reds by five games. San Diego, six out. Padres taking their lumps recently. And Dykstra hits a fly ball, center field. Dernier is there and makes the play for out number three. So that'll do it for the Mets here in the top of the fourth. They fail to score. They leave a runner stranded at the end of three and a half on the scoreboard. Four nothing Mets. Here at Wrigley Field, Eddie Lynch taking his warm up tosses. Check that bottom of the fourth inning. And Bob Dernier will lead it off for the Cubs. He'll be followed by Ryan Sandberg and then Gary Matthews. Through three innings of pitching, Eddie Lynch has been perfect. He's faced nine batters. Mets getting some good pitching coming out of spring training. Everybody was concerned about the pitching staff. They've done a fine job this year. Over the last 30 games, the Mets are 23 and 7. Their pitching staff has a 2.76 ERA. And their 3.19 ERA is fourth best in the National League. They have done a fine, fine job. 22 complete games this season. Of course, Dwight Gooden leading a pack with 11. 
And Dernier takes a strike from Eddie Lynch. No balls in one strike. In contrast to that, the Cubs are hard pressed to get a complete game. They've had a lot of problems. They haven't had a complete game since June 30th. Scott Sanderson missed a complete game against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Fontenot's effort yesterday was the closest they've come. Gary Carter flashing signs to Eddie Lynch. And Dernier takes outside one ball and two strikes. Eddie Lynch shook Gary Carter off on location. Slider outside, but fouled off by Dernier. One and two. It was interesting watching Eddie Lynch wind up. He started, then he, he was shaking his head and stopped. One and two on Bob Dernier. Slaps the ball into left field, base hit. And the first hit of the game by the Cubs. First base runner by the Chicago Cubs today. And you mentioned complete games, Fran. Eddie Lynch has five complete games this year. And coming into this year, he didn't have the one in 69 major league starts. Talked about that weight program he was on during the winter months. Obviously benefited from that. Of course, you can also benefit from your team scoring some runs for you, too, as he faces Ryan Sandberg, and Sandberg takes ball one. He's pitching for a different ball club now, too. They can score some runs for him. All those years when the Mets had a get great pitching and good defense. Sandberg pulls the ball foul off of Don Zimmer's left hand. Zim ought to know by now and let those balls go. The only guys who should feel those ground balls that are hit pretty hard are guys with gloves on. They'd be barehanding those balls. One time he used to barehand the ball at third base for the Mets. First third baseman the Mets ever had, as a matter of fact. And they've had about 77 since then. Dernier leading off first base, and Sandberg puts the ball in play. Lynch goes for the lead runner and gets him. Nice play by Eddie Lynch. Nice play, but not a good play in my mind. He's got to go to first base with a four-run lead, even though here at Wrigley Field, when you got Dernier running, even though Dernier is not running as, as well as he should, and you take a chance like that, if you're talking about probabilities and possibilities of going with the odds, but of course, Eddie, Playing very aggressive, and he cuts down the lead runner. Good play. Yeah, you got a good point there, and the way they would second guess it is if he was safe. Yeah, yeah that's really right. Really second yeah, guess. That's right. And if the guy's out, then you say the right move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the the thing is, I think too much of baseball is is talked about as far as the results are concerned. Yeah. I think uh, one of the big things as far as players are concerned when you start anticipating you got to anticipate properly and a lot of times you make a good play but it wasn't the right move and I think that was the case right there and Sandberg now on first base one out and a one one count and Gary Matthews Matthews popped the second base his first time up and I think the laws of probability if you do something like that often enough then you're going to eventually get burned it's funny how results though can cover up all imperfections yeah, that's true and Gary Mathis line drive Backman. Nice play by Backman. Easy double play. I'll tell you, that Backman's doing an outstanding job. So that'll do it for the Cubs here in the bottom of the fourth. They fail to score and after four complete. Four nothing. Mets. Friend. Ralph Kiner thought that that ball may have hit Ed Lynch's glove, but I don't believe it did. Oh, a 4-3 double play. That would have been an unusual play if it yeah. comes off Lynch's glove and then 
Backman catches it. That would have been a sign of a good athlete. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now Wally Backman, who's done an outstanding job for the Mets, leading off here in the top of the fifth. He'll be followed by Keith Hernandez and then Gary Carter. Well, you got to like this guy as a second baseman. Wally Backman. Fouls the ball out of play. With all the big names the Mets have in the field, it's easy to overlook a guy like this. Wally, a feisty guy. Derek Bart Botello, by the way, from Long Beach, California, 29 years old. And it's his second stint with the Cubs. But you're right about Backman. He is a nitty-gritty right down there with them. Dykstra and Backman. That's right. Two real good table setters. And Backman takes outside one and one. I remember an interview he did early in the year and he was having his problems offensively. He said, as time goes on, I'll hit and I'll raise my average. And boy, he's done it. In this ball game, he's one for two. In fact, right now, coming into today's action, batting 287. He has 19 stolen bases. He's been seven for seven. Fouls a ball out of play in his last 26 games. He scored 25 runs. Wally back. Get right side of the plate also. Derek Botello recently brought up from the Meyer Leagues. Came through irrevocable waivers today. That's when all the teams have a shot at you. And Backman to ground ball, base hit. And he's hustling to second base and he'll make it. Good base running by Wally Backman. Well, I think three guys got fooled on this play. Richie Hebner, got to keep going. He gave up a little early. And Ryan Sandberg and Keith Moreland anticipating that ball would have been fielded. Well, Backman takes advantage of all three of them. Three for the price of one. So Wally Backman down on second base. And for Backman, his 10th double of the season. So he's in scoring position. And the Mets have their leadoff man on for Keith Hernandez. Hernandez in this ball game has walked and flied to center field. Near made a nice catch off the ball that Hernandez hit to the wall in center field. Hernandez takes outside, ball one. Keith Hernandez with 60 RBIs this season. He broke into the top 10 in the RBI department. He's also batting 295. He's in the top 10 there. He takes outside, 2-0. In fact, with that 295 average, Keith Hernandez checking in in the seventh slot. In the National League, four guys in the top 10 batting over 300. Willie McGee leading the league with 347. How about the year Pedro Guerrero's having? Wow. Well, he is having a dandy of a year. Well, he really is. 27 home runs, 63 RBIs. And there's Larry Sorensen going down to warm up for the Cubs. Cubs pitching staff is, in fairness to them, they have just been decimated with injuries. Steve Trout, Rick Sutcliffe, Sutcliffe on the DL for the third time. Steve Trout with ulnar nerve problems in his left arm. Eckersley's been on the DL. Yeah, Eckersley got off to a fine start this year. In fact, they said last year at the end of the year, Eckersley was throwing the ball and pitching better baseball for the Cubs than anybody. He was 8-3 and three in the second half after June 15th, after July 15th. 8-3 and three with a 2.09 ERA. And of course, Sutcliffe went on. He was better than perfect last year, and he won the Cy Young Award in the National League. Hernandez fouling the ball back and out of play. 2-2. Two and two. Better than perfect. <laughs> better than perfect. Well, I'll tell you. A neat line. I like that. Nobody could beat him. I mean, you had to be surprised in the playoffs when they had the lead out in San Diego. You figure with the year this guy's had, there's no way the Padres are going to beat this guy. That's right. Padres came back and won the playoffs. So Jody Davis flashing signs and location to Derek Botello. 
made Keith think a little. Keith got out of there to regroup. Hernandez fouling the ball off. It's a pleasure to watch Hernandez swing that bat. Ball outside, he can sting the ball left field. Ball inside, he can sting it to right field. He can also pop the ball over the fence. And most of these guys in the meat of the batting order for the Mets put the ball in play. Even their home run hitters. The exception of Strawberry. Strawberry is going to strike out 100 times a year, but with that type of swing, you don't concern yourself with strikeouts. Darrell with two consecutive home runs today, and he has been responsible for all four runs that the Mets have. Speaking of striking out 100 times, Steve Balboni with the Kansas City Royals struck out over 100 times. When he reached the 100 mark, Keith Hernandez pulling the ball foul. When he reached the 100 mark, the batting instructor, Lee May, gave, gave him a bottle of champagne. He said, you're in select company right now. Balboni with 21 home runs in Kansas City. Two balls and two strikes on Keith Hernandez. Wally Backman on second base. Nobody out. Mets with a 4-0 lead. We're in the top of the fifth inning here at Wrigley Field. Jody Davis got way outside. And Otello just missed out there. Balboni set an American League record last year by striking out nine straight times. The National League record is nine straight also, set by Adolfo Phillips of the Adolfo Chicago Phillips. Cubs back in 1966. Right here in this ballpark. Two balls, two strikes on Hernandez. Ball just misses outside, so we got a full count. You remember at one time when you struck out, I mean, guys would do anything not to strike out. Then the philosophy changed. You know, they figured, you know, good hitters will strike out, so that it wasn't as as big a sin to strike out. I think guys' attitudes towards the strikeout has changed over the years. And Hernandez, it's a fly ball left field. Gary Matthews right there makes the play. One down. Wally Backman retreating to second base, and with one man out, the batter will be Gary Carter. Tim, I remember a statement that Richie Allen made. Struck out a lot. He said, well, I don't care how I make the outs. He said, it an out's an out. Of course, that the complexion of the game can change and put a ball in play. Yeah, that's that's Dick Allen rationalizing his strikeout. Yeah. Boy, he could hit, couldn't he? Yeah, he could oh, hit. He could hit. Here's a guy that can hit. Gary Carter. One out. Carter in this ball game. 0 for 1. And he doesn't want to leave Chicago without a home run right there going for the bridge, but misses 0-1. Wally Backman leading off the second base. 0-1 count on Gary Carter. And Carter takes inside 1-1. One one. Well, Daryl Strawberry in this ballgame with those two home runs passes Gary Carter. Carter with 13. Daryl Strawberry now with 14. George Foster leading the team with 15. George Foster resting this afternoon. Inside to Carter. Two balls and one strike. Now look at the flags blowing out. Wind is blowing out of the southwest at 16 miles an hour. That was the pregame report. And there's Jimmy Fry. Wally Backman at second base. And ball three, three and one. And we we're just talking about Dick Allen and about strikeouts. Ralph's book here. 23 players have K'd five times in one game. <laughs> and Dick Allen leads. He's number one. 15 times he's done. Gary Carter fouling the ball off. Wally Backman heading back to second base. He was on the move on that pitch. 
So three balls and two strikes. Wally Backman in motion. The American League record for five strikeouts in one game held by the Mick, Mickey Mantle. He did it ten times. Both count on Gary Carter. And he hits a high fly ball right center field. Moreland and Dernier. Dernier under it. He makes the catch. And Backman was not tagging. So he retreats to second base. And there are two men down. And guess who's the batter? He's got two home runs in this game. Well, they're going to walk him right now. You're not going to pitch the strawberry. Yeah, they're going to walk him. Jody Davis just signaled. Put him on. See the fans here in Chicago want to see him hit. Yeah, they're booing. <laughs> they can appreciate a great day. Well, he smoked those two home runs. He had a three-run homer his first time up. He's Billy Connors, the pitching coach for the Cubs. Darrell in the third inning hit a solo shot into the center field bleachers that got into the bleachers in a hurry. Well, he walks. So Darrell Strawberry intentionally passed. And the batter will be Danny Heath. Runners on first and second, two men down. And Danny Heath, who's one for two in this ball game, will face Derek Botello. There's a ball. One ball, no strikes. Danny Heap just missed a home run his last time up. Just got under it a little bit. Moreland made the catch, but he has rifle one to right field. And he takes down low. Two balls and no strikes. So with Derek Botella, it's a matter of select your own poison. That's right. And Danny Heap did a fine job when Darryl Strawberry was out with the broken thumb. He was going for it right there. Two and one. We're in the top of the fifth inning here at Wrigley Field. The Mets with a four nothing lead over the Cubs. This is the finale of the four game series. Cubs beating the Mets on Friday. Saturday and Sunday, it went to the Mets. And Danny Heap hits a shot to right field. Marlin going back, can't get it. Off the wall, the Mets will score two as Heap hustles into second base with a double. Six-nothing Mets. Uh, you saw Danny Heap just miss that 2-0 pitch. And with major league hitters, you cannot allow a pitcher to fall behind and continually try to throw that ball by guys. Now you can do that in the minor leagues. That's where Botello was 11 and 7. In the big leagues, it's a different story. These guys up here can hit. All of them can hit. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. This ball hit like a rocket to right field. Moreland belatedly with those glasses down. Now it scoots by him, and Strawberry scores easily. Poor Danny Heap is 14th double of the year. Jim Fry out to the mound. He's asking for or telling Larry Sorensen to get in the ball game. That'll be all for Dick, or Derek Botello as you look at Danny Heath. He just picked up his first of the game and two RBIs. The Mets have a six to nothing lead here in the top of the fifth. And a new pitcher. New pitcher for the Cubs, right hander Larry Sorensen. Larry, three and two on the year, a 5.18 ERA, his 26th ball game, and his 25th game in relief as he has started one game. He has no saves. He's worked 41 and two thirds. He's walked 15, struck out 20. Larry Sorensen, and boy, has he been around. Remember him coming up with the Milwaukee Brewers at that hard sinker? 
Thursday at 10 o'clock, it's Yankee Magazine. Join host Mel Allen as he round, rounds the bases from the Columbus Clippers to Henderson's battle for the American League batting title. Then at 10.30, join Fran Healy as he takes a look at who's hot and who's not. Pennant race heats up, and it, all that will be on Pennant Chase. Thursday on Sports Channel, what a lineup. Check your local listings for dates and times in the New England area. By the way, we, would, we should have word. Of course, we won't be able to relay it to our viewers today. There'll be word, I'm sure, later on tonight whether or not there will be a baseball strike. If there is a baseball strike, Sports Channel will offer alternate programming, a full slate of sports programming. So if you stay right there and check your local listings, you'll find out exactly what will be on the air. As you look at Derek Botello just knocked out of the ball game by the Mets. Boy, that has to be tough. He cut to the big leagues and big game and hit, hammered pretty good. As I mentioned, the score is 6-0 here in the top of the fifth inning. Larry Sorensen on the mound taking his warm-up tosses. Milwaukee Brewers were very high on this guy at one time. Now he's trying to prove himself to the Cucks. And he'll face Howard Johnson right now. Johnson 0 for 2 in his game, lined to third base and popped to the pitcher. And they're going to walk him. So they'll walk Howard Johnson and face Rafael Santana. Let's see if he balks. The catcher's balk. I've seen it called once this year in Cincinnati, but that was on a play at home play, an attempted steal of home. Bob Brindley came flying out of from behind the plate. And Jimmy Fry looking out at Larry Sorensen as he walks Howard Johnson. So runners on first and second in the batter, Rafael Santana. Santana in this ball game, two for two. He had an infield hit his first time up when he bounced the ball to Ron Say. And then in the fourth inning, he hit a bullet right back at Derek Patello, the starter, knocking his glove off. And Santana was able to hustle down to first base with his second hit of the game. You're looking at Danny Heap and Howard Johnson. Heap on second base, Johnson in first. Two men out, and Santana facing Larry Sorensen. He takes down low ball one. Here's Danny Heap leading off second base. Howard Johnson leading off first. Rafael Santana coming into today's action, batting 249. With those two hits, he'll go over to 250 mark, and he takes a strike, one and one. the game the Mets will fly to Montreal preparing for tomorrow night's action against the Montreal Expos you can catch all the action right here on Sports Channel 730 start to be followed by a game on Wednesday a seven o'clock start Santana takes down low ball two two balls and one strike a quiet crowd here at Wrigley Field in Chicago Another full house at Wrigley Field. The Cubs over the one and a half million mark. They set the record last year. They were over two million one hundred thousand. Most ever here at Wrigley. And Santana, it's a ground ball to short. Larry Ball makes the play to second. Very close. But I guess in time, and that'll do it for the Mets. Here in the top of the fifth, they score two more runs, and after four and a half on the scoreboard, the Mets have the lead 6-0. One of the better relief pitchers in baseball, in fact, Lee Smith, in the saves department, is number two in the league. He, uh, he has 23 saves for the Chicago Cubs. He's second to Jeff Reardon in Montreal. Reardon with 27. Number three and out for a couple weeks, at least a couple weeks. Goose Gossage. Gossage has 21. And leading off for of the Cubs here in the bottom of the fifth inning will be Keith Moreland. Moreland 0 for 1 in this game, grounded to second base his first time up, and he pulls the ball foul, strike one. 
talked about it earlier, earlier last year Keith Moreland charged the mound with Eddie Lynch pitching as the teams have exchanged some brush back pitches. And there's a breaking ball for a strike. 0 oh and 2. Well, I've seen some weird things happen in this ballpark over the years. So a six run lead normally would not be a real comfortable lead with the wind blowing out. But the Cubs just are not swinging the bat capably. That's right. And Moreland, it's a high fly ball left field. But Danny Heap has room. One down. Well, I'll tell you, last year the Mets could not buy any breaks in this ballpark. They were one and eight against the Cubs, and this year, well, this series certainly is, I think, an indication of how the Cubs have been going. You talk about their pitching staff being decimated, it certainly has been, but that shouldn't affect the offense. Their offense has been affected this year. Yes. And a batter, Richie Hebner. Richie Hebner in his ball game grounded the first base. He's all for one and he takes outside ball one. Cubs feel they played better ball here in Chicago because of their intensity. As Hebner slaps the ball to right field, Darryl Strawberry's there makes the catch two outs. Well, they did last year, of course, but this year, that 13-game losing streak earlier in the year. And the Mets, I don't, you know, as you know, Brand, none of us know whether there's going to be a strike, but I'll tell you one ball club that will be affected if there is a strike, and that's the New York Mets. Yes. They are playing the best baseball that they've played in a long, long time. They're confident. Everything is crisp. And for it to be, and even if it's only a week, that they leave. That's right. The Mets have it all going right now. They're in super drive. Yes, sir. As Eddie Lynch throws a breaking ball outside. 2-0 to Jody Davis. Jody Davis 0 for 1 in his game. He flied to center field. Yeah, they have a well-oiled machine right now. From the first guy to the 25th guy in the ball club. They're confident. They're playing with a lot of poise. With a lot of aggressiveness. And they're packing them in at Shea Stadium as Jody Davis pulls the ball foul. They're packing them in on the road, too. Yes, they are. The Mets are drawing very, very well on the road. How well are they drawing on the road? <laughs> well, we'll try to let you know. They've drawn a million three hundred fifty-one thousand on the road. Two one pitch to Jody Davis. He hits a long drive left field. That ball is gone. Home run for Jody Davis. Six to one. Mets on top of the Cubs. And for Jody Davis, who's been injured a lot this year, his tenth home run and 42nd RBI. And the 14th home run yielded by Ed Lynch that ties Ron Darling for the team high of home runs yielded. But this ballpark, the Mets have had good luck with the Cubs. It's unbelievable. That's the first Cub home run in the last four ball games. Yeah, that's unheard. That's a record in this ballpark. It might be. I can't remember a four-game series being played where the Cubs didn't have two, three, four home runs. And here comes a guy who can hit a home run, Ron Say, and he hits a fly ball that'll drift foul and out of play. No balls in one strike. This fastball inside, way out of here. Ralph Kiner correcting me. Gary Matthews did have a home run in Friday's game, a game-winning home run. It's amazing how I blot out all the negative things. <laughs> By the way, Ron Say with 13 home runs this year. He's had some great years, hasn't he? With the Dodgers and here with the Cubs. Yeah, but he hadn't hit, had but one home run in his last 49 ball games. Yeah, he's been having his problems, and he hits on top of that ball. Should be an easy play. Score it 5-3, to three, and that'll do it for the Cubs here in the bottom of the fifth. They pick up a run, and after five on the scoreboard, Mets six. Top of the sixth inning here at Wrigley Field. Eddie Lynch will lead it off for the Mets. 
Lindsay looking through our center field camera at the crowd here at Wrigley Field. Lynch will be followed by Lenny Dykstra and then Wally Backman. Well, I got a little history for you here today. Brandy, my boy. All right. Back in 1921, on this day, this August 5th, 1921, radio station KDKA and announcer Harold Arlen provided its listeners with the first ever broadcast of a major league game. Pittsburgh Pirates and the Philadelphia Phillies. It was the Pirates over the Phillies, eight to five. Now he had a, a grandson or a nephew that pitched in the major leagues. Is that right? Pitch, Harold Arlen? Yeah, he pitched for the, in, the, in the Phillies organization. He, he came up in the Philly organization. He ended up in San Diego named Steve Arlen. Oh yeah. Remember him? Yeah, sure do. Be spectacle young right-hander. That's, that's right. A dentist out of Ohio State as Eddie Lynch files the ball out of play. One ball and one strike. Count. That was his grandson, huh? He, he was a relative. I don't know if it was his grandson or his son or his nephew. He was I wasn't his son. Not if he broadcast the first game in 1921. <laughs> you never know. Well, that's true. <laughs> but anyways, he was a relative. And Eddie Lynch takes strike two, one and two. If it was his son, certainly, he was souring at quite a ripe age, I would think. See, the broadcasters can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Foul out of play. So the count stays one ball and two strikes. Remember those days in San Diego, Steve Arlen? They had Clay the Kid Kirby with the San Diego Padres. I'm sure you hit off of Clay Kirby. Yes, sir. Came from the Cardinal farm system. As a matter of fact, Clay was in the minor league system with the Cardinals back in the middle 60s. Eddie Lynch strikes out, one down. the chart the Chicago Cubs are keeping for tomorrow the pitching chart now does that mean anything we don't know and nor neither do they they're doing their job everybody's doing their job and hope that it doesn't happen that's right Tim's talking about the strike as Bob Vernier makes a nice catch to take an extra base hit away from Looney Dykstra two down Everybody's anxiously awaiting word. It should come out of New York later on today, possibly tomorrow. Everybody remains optimistic. And guardedly. Here, yes, guardedly optimistic, right. And here's Wally Backman. Backman in his ball game two for three. He had an infield hit, then he grounded to second base, and he doubled to right field and scored a run. Sorensen, and a relief of Derek Botello. And Wally takes a strike. 0 and 1. Two men out here in the sixth inning. The Mets on top of the Cubs, 6 to 1. The Mets scored three in the first, one in the third, and two in the fifth. The Cubs got their run in the bottom of the fifth on a home run by Jody Davis. And Wally Beckman foul tips the ball into Davis's glove. 0-2. Wind blowing out. Blowing hard towards the outfield wall. And Wally Backman flies to right field. Left field, I should say. And Gary Matthews there. Makes the play for out number three. So, for the Mets, here in the top of the six, they fail the score. They send three men to the plate. And that'll do it for the Mets. The Mets going to the bottom of the sixth inning with a 6-1 to one lead over the Cubbies. For the batter, he foul tips the ball off of Gary Carter's mask. Strike one. Oh, 0 for 1 in his ballgame. He flied to center field as only at bat. Got the bottom of the order right now, but with Ed Lynch tiring, I wouldn't be a bit surprised with Ron Meredith warming for the Cubs. He'll be the pitcher in the seventh. But I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Davey Johnson get Roger McDowell up on a day like today before Ed Lynch's last start, a start in which he went five innings and only five winning the ball game. He had not pitched since July 13th and had those stomach problems to cause him to miss a couple of starts. So Ed is still not back to full strength. And right now he's pitching Larry Bowen, no ball, two strike count. Ed Lynch has done a fine job for the Mets this year. 
ball off the plate. One ball and two strikes. Larry Boa switch hitting shortstop. Been around a lot of years, and he takes outside two and two. Well, he has, and because of that, everybody in the world knows that Boa cannot drive the ball the other way. Lynn Dykstra and Danny Heap, much, much too deep out there. He can hit a fly ball possibly that deep, but no line drive. And a 2-2 pitch, a ball foul out of play, so the count stays 2-2. Two and two. See how he drags the bat through the strike zone? He swings with his arms and not his wrists. That is not his natural style of hitting from the left side. Well, they wrote that guy off early in the year. He's come on strong for the Cubs. They started Sean Dunstan at shortstop. He had some problems, and Boa picks up a base hit in the right field. So Boa picking up his first hit of the ball game. And the Cubs have their leadoff man on here in the sixth. And the Cubs have their third hit, by the way, on that single off the bat of Larry Bowen. And Gary Woods will bat for Larry Sorensen. Woods batting 213. He has one RBI this year. Two doubles. 13 hits. Woods takes strike one from Eddie Lynch. And too many things can happen in this ballpark, I'll tell you. Seen it over the years, Fran. With that wind blowing out, a five-run lead is nothing, even though, as we said, the Cubs are not hitting the ball real well. But they certainly have a lot of time to come back. And Woods goes up the middle. Backman makes the play. Tag second goes the first double play. is nicely turned by Backman and watch Santana get out of the way. Lynch tries to backhand it and watch Backman. Whoa! Get out of the way, Robbie. <laughs> I, I'll handle it from here. Watch Santana come over and now he just keeps right on going. Whoa! <laughs> All right. So Larry Ball let off the inning with a base hit. Woods grounds into a double play and with two men out, the batter will be the leadoff man, Bob Dernier. They're near one for two in his game, grounded to short and fly to left field. Two outs. Eddie Lynch has been in command so far. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, and Dernier takes a strike. Dernier takes the ball. One ball and one strike. Right now, Dernier wants home plate umpire Jerry Crawford to take a look at the ball. As I mentioned, in these 3 o'clock starts out here in Chicago, the Cubs are 8-9. and nine. That's their record starting games at 3 o'clock here. And Dernier hits a chopper over the head of Howard Johnson. A base hit. Now, Dernier can run. He's had leg trouble, and he holds on at first base. One of the reasons is because Danny Heath got to the ball in a hurry, and the most important reason is the Cubs trailing the Mets 6-1. to one. Yeah, Danny did a nice job getting that ball in a hurry and holding Dernier to a single, but you got to be sure when your five runs down. And another good hitter for the Cubs, Ryan Sandberg will step to the plate. He's 0 for 2. He grounded to third base and bounced back to the pitcher. See Davey Johnson meandering up and down that dugout. He looks very antsy, and he may be getting a, that bullpen active. And a shot. Great stop by Wally Backman. Score it 4 to 3 and a tip and a half to the mid-second baseman. And with that play, that'll do it for the Cubs here in the bottom of the sixth. They fail to score. They leave a runner stranded. And at the end of six, on the scoreboard, the Mets six, Cubs one. Top of the seventh inning, the Mets with a six-run lead. Ralph Kiner back in, and the Cubs have a new pitcher, Ralph. And that new pitcher is Ron Meredith with a record of one win and no losses. This is his 10th game as a Cub. Comes in with an earned run average of 3.45, and he'll be pitching to Keith Hernandez as his first batter. 
I did think I would get uh, a little bit more concern from my colleagues about my health. I informed my colleagues Ralph Kiner and Bill Webb and Fran Healy that I'd gone without eating red meat for a week. I got no response whatsoever. Dead silence. Dead silence. I that thought comes that, under I, the classification of big deal. Who cares, <laughs> right? <laughs> Obviously not concerned with my health, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> and Keith Hernandez will hit off Ron Meredith. And he takes a fastball low. Keith 0 for 2. He walked and scored a run on Daryl Strawberry's 13th home run of the year. Three run shot in the first, and Daryl with a solo shot in the third. You know, you were talking about the first baseball broadcast on this date, 1921. Uh-huh. Pittsburgh played Philadelphia, and Harold Arlen was the man who broadcast that game. Pittsburgh won it 8-5. to five. And the first regular broadcast of baseball game started right here in Chicago. WGN, was it? Well, let's see now. Could be. WGN's been around a long time. technician up here says she thinks so. WMAQ in 1924. Hal Totten was the broadcaster and he did the play-by-play. -play. Last time I listened to our technician. <laughs> <laughs> Good breaking ball gets Hernandez. So Meredith comes in and finds fashion. Striking out Hernandez and the batter Gary Carter. You know, they said when they started doing baseball on radio that it would ruin the attendance. Nobody would come out to park anymore. They also said the same thing about TV. The first televised game, college game, was back in 1939 at Columbia University, Bakerfield in New York. Bill Stern did the play-by-play. -play. Princeton defeated Columbia 2-1 to in the 10-inning ball game. First game on television. The first professional game on TV by Red Barber in 39. It was on August 26th. The Dodgers against the Cincinnati Reds. A doubleheader on station W2XBS. <laughs> 2XBS. Huh? That was symbolic, huh? Extra base hit. It sounds like somebody's scorecard that day. 2XBS. Red Barber did the play by play. The first TV World Series was 1947. <laughs> Dodgers and Yankees. I think that's quite an appropriate television station. But Red Barber is really a uh, funny, funny man telling that story. They had no monitor in, in those days, right? Just right. One camera. One camera. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> Carter lifts the pop fly right side. It could be trouble. Sandberg, nice play. Sandberg looking for Hebner and then looking for Moreland. And then decided to take it himself, and it's a good thing he did. Hebner and Moreland had no chance for this ball. And a good shot of it here as you see Sandberg make a very difficult catch. And he did it with good style. Speaking of style, Daryl Strawberry, two for two, two home runs. Home runs number 13 and 14. And then he was intentionally passed in the fifth inning and scored a run. Ball well hit to center field. It might be number three and in. First Met to hit three home runs in the ball game was Jim Hickman way back when. Now Daryl Strawberry with his third. He was walked intentionally in the fifth inning. Didn't get a shot at it. Well, and at this pace, Daryl Strawberry could well get another shot. Jay Horowitz, as always, right on cue. As is Strawberry right here. Man. Well, there's no doubt about this one. This one, Darrell got up for the windscreen. The other two he hit were line shots, and he almost hit it over the back of the lower bleachers. He is the fourth Met to hit three home runs in a ball game, a breaking ball for a strike. Jim Hickman did it in 1965 against the Cardinals, and I called every one of them. Dave Kingman did it in Los Angeles in 76, and Claude L. Washington in 1980 against the Dodgers. Thanks, Jay. All right. Daryl Strawberry, five RBIs, four runs scored, home runs number 13, 14, and 15.
on the afternoon. And if you have just tuned in, you heard it right. Man, what a day. What a week. Well, the Mets are going to have to score some more runs for him to get a chance at batting one more time. Or at least put some men on, on the base, right? Mm-hmm. This ball well hit to center field. Dernier, however, glasses down and catches it at the end of the warning track. Darryl Strawberry's third home run of the game gets the Mets another run. And after six and a half, it's seven to one New York. Well, Kid Shirt Day is coming up on the next homestand at Jay Stadium Saturday. Kind of glad I'm here, Ralph. Three home runs by Darryl Strawberry, a fine pitching performance by Ed Lynch. Mets up 7-1. to And the Mets, if they win this ball game, would be in the tie with the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals are playing later on tonight against the Philadelphia Phillies at home. And the Cardinals lose their ball game, the Mets would go into first place. Isn't that something? Let's see who the Cardinals will be firing tonight at those Philadelphia Phillies. It's going to be Shane Raleigh, seven and six, against Danny Cox, who is twelve and six. And the batter Gary Matthews, Strawberry, with three home runs, five RBIs, four runs scored. My goodness, what a day! Matthews is 0 for two. Good slider. And this one fouled out of play. And Keith Hernandez over near the dugout or the bullpen and makes the catch. Man, I thought that ball was out of play, number one, but they're never out of play when Hernandez can reach it. And you forgot about that wind blowing out toward the outfield. This ball was in the stands that was blowing back onto the playing field. Hernandez actually didn't start off to get that ball right away, and then he picked it up as he said, hey, that wind's blowing that ball back. I better get out there. So a good play by Keith Hernandez, and Keith Moreland will be the batter. Slider for a ball. I think Daryl Strawberry on that last home run had as many people here cheering for him as he would at Shea Stadium. That might be a little bit of an overstatement, but certainly a lot of people on their feet for him, huh? There really were. And of course, Cub fans are a special breed of cat out here. Love to see good baseball. Two and one to Moreland. And they certainly saw it last year, but this year the Cubbies have really been struggling. Those injuries have decimated the ball club. Rusty Staub concentrating on this ball game. A little tap toward first. Hernandez will have to hurry. And a collision with Hernandez and Lynch. Oh, boy. Looks like Lynch hurt his throwing arm. Boy. Man, it looks like Hernandez has a sore knee out of this. Let's hope it's nothing serious. Here it is again in the replay. Hit slowly out to first and at first, Lynch going for it, figuring to get it. He can't catch up to it. And then Lynch still trying to pick it up as Hernandez tries to get to it. So the collision. And now Lynch going back to the mound. He appears to be all right. And so does Hernandez. It appeared that Hernandez did land on the padded area of his body. <laughs> Didn't look like a, a knee was wrenched, did it? Oh, right there. Ooh. Mm. And Lentz going down on that right side. Now he's going to toss a couple, couple of balls, see if he's all right. Here's he's, he's okay. Well, it's going to be scored a base hit for Keith Moreland. But you can understand a collision in the outfield. But one on the infield like that is less understandable. But a little indecision, it appeared, on Ed Lynch's part. And Hernandez, really, but... That was a frightening moment there. Two big guys running at each other pretty good. 
Richie Hebner the batter. Hernandez will play behind Moreland. They both appear to be all right. Ed appeared to land on that right elbow of his. Man. Fastball for a strike. 0-1. Oh one. one out. Moreland at first. 7-1 New York. Well, the right center, Dykstra over. And he makes the catch on the track. Glenn Dykstra, with a very, very quick start, he got a great jump on that ball. He is a fine defensive center fielder. He's impressive, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Well, he gets in a full motion in a hurry. And the batter's going to be Jody Davis. Jody homered his last time up. with home run number 10 in the fifth inning and a slider for a strike. Make that ball just a little too high to Jody Davis. Swings and misses at a slider, one and one. Davis with good power the other way. He did pull his home run, but he did hit the ball out in right field too. Ball right on the black. So Lynch has been sharp all afternoon. Cubs have hit some balls well, but big thing is Ed Lynch is all right after that collision with Hernandez, and Keith's all right. Ball lifted to left field. Didn't get this one. Danny Heap there to make the catch. No runs, a hit, and one left here in the seventh. And after seven innings of play, it's seven to one New York. Top of the eighth inning, and Jay Horowitz has handed us another nifty piece of information. Darryl Strawberry has become the first National League player to hit three home runs in the ball game. In the American League, Gorman Thomas had three in a game against Oakland on April 11th, and Larry Parrish had three in a game on April 29th against the Yankees. So, so the first in the National League to have three homers in one game. enjoying the sun here at Wrigley Field. It's been playing peekaboo all afternoon. It is a warm, humid day in Chicago. Howard Johnson batting from the right side takes a breaking ball from Ron Meredith. Darryl Strawberry with two home runs against Barrett Derek Botello and now one against Ron Meredith. He homered with two on in the first. Solo shot in the third. He was intentionally walked and scored a run in the fifth. Solo home run in the seventh. 0-2 to Johnson. Howard's 0 for 2. Another breaking ball. Got him. Second strikeout for Meredith. And the batter's going to be Rafael Santana. Twenty-eight years old. Pitching to Rafael Santana. He's the third pitcher employed by Jimmy Fry today. Breaking ball is low to Santana. Rafi's had a good day. Two for three. Two singles. One and one. Seven to one New York. They win this game, they'll be tied with the Cardinals. One and two to Santana. Mets have won six out of eight, 23 out of 30. So it's two and two. As I guess that one one pitch was a little high. Mets will have to get two men on base for Strawberry to bat again. Another base hit for Santana. So there's one of them. Third base hit of the day for Santana. 
And the tenth hit for the Mets. And the batter Ed Lynch, who has sacrificed twice and struck out. Well, I guess he'll be called upon to sacrifice again. Mets leave Chicago this afternoon after the game and go to to await word as to whether the players will strike or not. And we hope to be on the air tomorrow night. Something over which we have no control, however. 0-1 oh, to Lynch. Rick Aguilera scheduled a pitch tomorrow night against David Palmer. Aguilera with a record of 4-3. and three. Palmer 6-9 and nine on the year. That game will be on the air at 7.30 New York time. Right here on Sports Channel. And then again on Sports Channel Wednesday evening. 7.30 start. Sid Fernandez against Joe Hesketh. 0-2 oh, to Ed Lynch. And the finale is Thursday night. Ron Darling against Bryn Smith. And then the Mets come back to Shea. Play three games this week against the Chicago Cubs. And then four against the Phillies before they take off again. Check swing, but he went too far. Third strikeout for Meredith, and with one, two out and a runner at first base, the batter is Len Dykstra. Dykstra 0 for 4 on the afternoon. He has flied out four times. Once to left, once to right, and twice to center. He's not the type of hitter to hit that ball in the air and get away with it. Yeah, that's trouble when he gets the ball up. As they say in the business, little man hit it. Mm. Speaking of little folks. <laughs> another good breaking ball from Meredith. So it's 0-2 to Dykstra. Though Dykstra has not hit for a big average, batting only 248 coming in. He has provided great defense and the ability to get on base. Line drive past Kepner. It hit his glove. Santana will go to third base, and we'll see how it's going to be scored. Should be an error on Richie Hebner. Well, unless somebody gets picked off, it will assure Daryl Strawberry of batting in the ninth inning. Darrell the chance to hit four home runs in one game. So it is going to be scored a base hit for Lynn Dykstra off the glove of Richie Hebner. So a base hit for Dykstra puts runners at first and third, two out, and Wally Backman the batter. And his, he played a fine ball game. Some sparkling plays on defense. Single, a double, and a run scored. Two for four. Well, he made a pickup on a hard smash. that was as good as you could make. That was hit by Ryan Sandberg back in the sixth inning. Man, that was a good play. That in-between hop. Backhanded. Mm. Don't know how hard those catches are until you have to make one. Oh, boy. So true. Dykstra easily back. Could be in motion with Santana at third. Two out. We're in the eighth. Seven to one, New York. Grounds one off his foot. Ball went a long way, so you know that had to hurt. That ball came off the foot after it hit his bat. Boy, those hurt. They're rarely serious, but they always have those dogs barking, don't they? It's like a minor operation. It's only minor when it's on somebody else. <laughs> That's right. Did something today, Tim, a man should never do. I left my wife in one of the most expensive stores that you can find in the United States or the world, for that matter. Oh. With my American Express card. Mm, you left home without it. Oh, she got it. <laughs> I hate 
wait to find out the damage. That's Terry Leach throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets. I was going to say, have you heard about any <laughs> carnage being reaped to her benefit and to your everlasting regret? <laughs> I don't know how I ever fell in that trap. Don't feel bad. <laughs> we all get that. <laughs> oh, and two to Backman. One and two. Hey, that little section there on by the hotel there has got some great stores. Michigan Avenue, the Miracle Mile. It's a miracle if you get out of there alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call it the Miracle Mile. Huh? It's a miracle if you don't spend a ton of money. Oof. Naturally, the Mets Hotel was located right in the middle of that. You can't go by that store without going. When you come out of the hotel without going by, you can't That's get around right. that corner. Two and two to Backman. Stays alive. Seven to one. New York leads. Three home runs by Daryl Strawberry. And stay with us because he's due to come up again. Be up in the ninth. Fans back in New York probably enjoying happy hour about now. Extend that happy hour and watch Strawberry hit in the ninth. Only eight National Leaguers have ever hit four home runs in a game. The last to do it, Mike Schmidt in this ballpark. Ten years ago, I think that nine years ago. Got him with the breaking ball. Fourth strikeout for Meredith as he strikes out the side here in the eighth inning. But the Mets did have a couple of hits. They now have 11 and they lead seven to one after seven and a half. We're going now to the bottom of the eighth. And of course, we mentioned the fact that Daryl Strawberry with a chance to hit four home runs in the ball game. I said eight National Leaguers. There are only seven National Leaguers and three in the American League. So we'll correct that. Only two of the ten who have hit four home runs in the game have done it in four consecutive at bats. Strawberry would have that chance because the one time he was up that he did not have a home run. He was walked intentionally. Ron say the batter. Yeah, but <laughs> that's seven of the four, ten. If you get four home runs in a game, baby, it doesn't matter whether they're You'll consecutive take a, or not. Seven of the ten did it in nine innings. And two of the ten did it before the turn of the century. Lou Gehrig, the first to do it in what is considered modern-day baseball. He hit four in a game in 1932. June 3rd of 32. One and one to say. And a slider, one and two. Ed Lynch has pitched very well. He's given up only five hits and the only run, a home run by Jody Davis. He has struck out no one and walked no one. Typical Ed Lynch game. Hmm. Slider misses two and two. Warren Brewstar up and throwing for the Cubs. Pitcher the third hitter slated here in the eighth. Tim McCarver along with Ralph Kiner and Fran Healy. Slider ripped the center. Good piece of hitting by Ryan Say. Mets lead seven to one and the batter Larry Boa. with a base hit and two times up. Lentz did not give up a hit as he retired his first nine batters. The first hit in the game was by Bob Denier in the fourth inning. Home run by Jody Davis accounting for the one run the Cubs had came in the fifth. Line drive, base hit, right field. Well, Larry Boa has his second hit and three trips. Should get action in the Met bullpen. And it does. Roger McDowell is up. Lynch worked only 
five innings in his last outing. He had that collision with Hernandez back in the seventh inning. Both appear to be all right. Gary Carter and Keith talking to Ed Lynch, and the batter's going to be Thad Bosley. And boy, what a job he has done. Nine for his last 13 as a pinch hitter. And he's tied for the league lead with 12 pinch hits. Batting 375 as a pinch hitter. Thad Bosley. There's Roger McDowell up and throwing. Seven to one game, but the wind is blowing out. Keep that in mind. This ballpark can shrink up in a hurry. Fastball misses. Bow at first, say it second. Nobody out in the eighth. Ball to center field. Danny Heap on the move and makes the catch. Danny came from nowhere. So Bosley flies to Danny Heap in left center. And the batter's going to be Bob Dernier, the leadoff hitter. Dernier two for three. He is twice single to left field. chance to rip Popeye at all before the game? Yeah, I went down and we chatted a little bit. Fired a few barbs his way. He fired a few back to me. That's generally our pregame consultation here at Wrigley Field. He's a great guy, I'll tell you. What a hard-working baseball man. Well, if you say Mr. Baseball, he'd fit right in there. He really he? would. Quite a guy. We'll talk baseball with you 25 hours a day. One and one to Dunier. That's when he's not talking about horses. <laughs> <laughs> he is a Damon Runyon character, I'll tell you that. One and one to Bob Dunier. Fastball outside, two and one. Dernier has no home run this year, but he did have four last year, plus a home run off Eric Shaw to lead off the National League Championship Series. Game one, a game in which the Cubs won 12 to nothing. But of course, the Padres came back in games three, four, and five to beat the Cubs. Fly ball to right field. This should be easy for Daryl Strawberry. He makes the play, and Ron Say goes to third, and now he's going to score. Daryl Strawberry on the biggest day of his life just commits a terrible mistake in right field. That is embarrassing, folks. Man, cannot do that. Daryl not knowing the out count thought it was the inning ending catch and right here we'll look at it again he catches the ball thinking it's three outs has no intention of doing anything but to hold on to it. he looks down and say coming from second base tagging up the play comes in the score and the Cubs get their second run well that's little league ball right there Ralph you cannot make a mistake like that that is going to be a sacrifice fly for Bob Dernier <laughs> Some way to pick up a ribby, huh? <laughs> you wonder what Dykstra was saying out there. Glenn Dykstra was right next to him. And I guess by Darrell coming in about three steps, Dykstra probably was talked into the fact that there might be three out. You gotta know how many outs there are. Spend millions of dollars worth on scoreboards. Maybe Darrell's thinking about his next at bat. <laughs> 
certainly ought to be thinking about it, but not to that extent. Not to the, to the extent that you make a critical mistake like that. How can it be critical in a 7-2 game? Well, this wind's blowing out. Ed Lynch has pitched to his last batter, and Roger McDowell's going to be the pitcher. RBI number 15 by Bob Dernier and before this day started. I don't imagine he thought he'd get it like that. McDowell coming in the ballgame, making his 34th appearance. He has a record of five wins and four losses. He's picked up nine saves. And he has an earned run average of 3.04. He's worked 77 innings, given up 68 hits, allowing 26 earned runs. He has thrown up six home runs, walking only 25, while striking out 48 in his 77 innings. So Roger McDowell in the ballgame to pitch to Ryan Sandberg, a very dangerous hitter. Well, Saturday at 2 o'clock, the Yanks match up, match up with their arch rivals, the Boston Red Sox. Catchy action as Henderson, Mattingly, and the rest of the crew go after Fenway's Park, Fenway Park's Green Monster. Also for the Red Sox, super slugger Jim Rice. The Yanks and the Bo Sox, Saturday at 2, only on Sports Channel. We've got New York sports covered. Sandberg, the batter, will be up for the fourth time. He was robbed of a base hit by Wally Backman on a backhand pickup of a line shot back in the sixth inning. Seven to two ball game. Larry Boyd, first base, two out, bottom of the eighth inning. with 11 hits and the Cubs with seven. Slider is high. Good McDowell finished this game and the Mets win. He will not be credited with a save with the score seven to two. Two and oh. the MVP last year for the Cubs. Fouls this one back, two and one. He's having another good year this year. Not like his year last year when he led the National League in total bases. Got started very poorly this year when he hit only 192 in April, but since then he's been hitting well over 300. He had 19 home runs, 19 triples, and 36 doubles last year. 32 stolen bases. First MVP for the Cubs since Ernie Banks back in 58. Ernie won it twice in 58 and 59. Two and two to Rhino. Won his second straight gold glove. Led the league in runs scored with 114. Third in slugging percentage for a number two hole hitter. That might stand out as his greatest achievement last year. Pops this one up and Carter can't find it. And now he's going to go back. It's a couple of rows back. So Gary wouldn't have had a shot at it. Even if he had seen the ball. I said he led the league in total bases. He was actually one behind Dale Murphy of the Braves. Murphy had 332 stolen uh, total bases, and Sandberg had 331. He was one home run and one triple shy of becoming the first man in Major League history to have 200 hits, 20 or more doubles, triples, home runs, and stolen bases. So he had some kind of banner year. He tried to hold up, did he? Yes, he did. Three and two. Dykstra is there. 
and he makes the catch. So one run on two hits, no errors, and one left. Coming up in the ninth, Darrell Strawberry scheduled for the third hitter. And the, the situation here at Wrigley Field. The Mets will send Keith Hernandez, Gary Carter, and Darrell Strawberry to the plate. The Mets not only lead seven to two, but Darrell Strawberry has driven in five runs with three home runs. The last player to hit four home runs in a game, Mike Schmidt, he did it here at Wrigley Field. It was an extra inning ball game. And the last player to do it in regulation time, that is within the first nine innings, Willie Mays, back in 1961. First to hit a grand slam home run, I shouldn't say grand slam, four home runs in one game was Bobby Lowe for Boston of the National League. In 1894, Ed Delahanty of the Phillies of the National League did it in 96, 1896, and then Lou Gehrig, the first to do it in what is called modern-day baseball in 1932 on June the 3rd. Chuck Klein in 10 innings had four in one game in 1936. Pat Seary in 11 innings had four in a game in 48. Gil Hodges had four in a game on August 31st, 1950. Joe Adcock had four in a game in 1954. Rocky Colavito in 59. Hernandez 0 for 3 on the afternoon has walked and scored a run. 7 to 2, New York. Strawberry has hit one to right and two to center. The one to right, a three-run shot. The other two solo home runs. But not so low that they didn't clear the fence. <laughs> 2-0 to Hernandez. Warren Brewstar, by the way, the new pitcher for the Cubs. Brewstar, the fourth pitcher employed by Jimmy Fry, manager of Chicago. Has a record of 2-1 and one with four saves. This is his 35th appearance. He has an earned run average of 4.99. There's a strike, 2-1. a little off that sinker and Hernandez cues it off toward the Cub dugout so it's two and two to Keith Hernandez. George Frazier warming up for the Cubs. Conditions are right for Strawberry to hit his fourth home run. Warren Brewstar has to keep the ball away to be effective. Strawberry likes it away and I guess the biggest element the wind blowing out from the flags on the flagpoles around here, it appears to be picking up. Three and two to Hernandez. Make that ball four to Hernandez. As he walks on the three two pitch, first walk issued by Bruce Starr and the batter Gary Carter. for three today did reach on a walk back in the first and scored on Strawberry's first home run a three run home run is 13th of the year Strawberry now tied with George Foster for home run leadership Gary Carter has 13 and a fastball inside from Warren Brewstar be interesting to see if first base is open what Jimmy Fry does with Strawberry he walked him intentionally back in the fifth inning side of the coin says go ahead and pitch to him regardless of the circumstances. The other side of the coin says you're still trying to win a ball. You don't care about somebody else's records. Preston Gomez, a manager of the San Diego Ball Club, took a pitcher out that was pitching a no-hit game. He had given up one run. He took him out for a pinch hitter with an inning to go, and he got booed and criticized by his general manager. That was Clay Kirby. Clay Brand, Kirby, the pitcher. Brand mentioned that earlier. Mentioned Clay Kirby's name, not that particular game, however. Two and one to Carter. Hernandez at first. 
And nobody out. That was against the Mets. The name of the game is to win, and that's the way you have to play it. Right. And a slider is fouled off, so it's two and two to Gary Carter. The general manager that criticized Preston Gomez, the manager was Buzzy Bavese. At the time, he said the Padres were going nowhere anyway. Why not let him get a chance to become the first Padre pitcher to pitch a no-hit game, even though it would not have been a no-hit, no-run game? Well, if I'm going to be criticized and I'm the manager, the one guy I wouldn't want to criticize is my boss. <laughs> Needless to say, he didn't manage there very long. <laughs> right. Check swing, and it's foul. So Carter's still alive. Gary 0 for 3, so the Mets have Carter and Hernandez 0 for 6 with two walks today, and yet they have a 7-2 lead. Bertie Tebbets once took Jay Hook out of a game. Bertie, the manager, he was pitching a no-hit, no-run game through six innings, and someone asked him why he took him out of that no-hitter, and he said he was too young to pitch a no-hitter. <laughs> So he got the hook out for Hook. Huh? He hooked him. Who could? Who had a good hook? He did have a good hook. And he could tell you how it would hook. <laughs> he was a scientific man. Well, a 3-2 pitch now coming up on Gary Carter. I would imagine Hernandez will be off and running. And then all the dramatics. Capped into one at bat. Daryl Strawberry on deck. the double play and the batter Daryl Strawberry strikeout double play and Hernandez is out so two men away here in the ninth in the big event coming up can Strawberry hit his fourth home run of the ball game as you look at the strikeout double play one more time I tell you if I'm a pitcher right now I say I'm gonna give you my best stuff if you can hit it hit it not that you wouldn't say that normally Strawberry with three home runs on the afternoon. Chance for baseball history. Number 11 to do it if he can do it. Fastball is low, 2 and 0. Oh. And if I'm Strawberry, I'm not going to let him walk me. No way. No way. Got to swing at everything. Go to Hackett. Go down to three balls, no strikes, then keep swinging. Fastball outside. We'll see if he does that. Now he's got to swing at the ball even if it's out of the strike zone. I guarantee you. And he takes a strike. You're taking a chance on the umpire calling that pitch a ball. Oh, you don't get many shots at this. Johnny Mize had the most shots at hitting four in a game. Six times he had three in a game. Never did hit four. So you better take advantage of it. Swings and misses at a fastball out of the strike zone. And all these fans that are still here, and they're almost all here that came in, are aware of the situation. Drama of a Elmore Leonard novel. Rip to right, he didn't get it up. He just didn't get it up. Darryl Strawberry, four for four on the afternoon. Been on base five times, four runs scored, five RBIs, and three home runs. Man. Oh, he, he got a good pitch to hit here. Sinking fastball, and he gets a lot of wood on it, but he couldn't get it in the air as the ball sunk down to the bottom part of the bat. So Darrell a chance to become the first Met to ever have four home runs in the game. And he ends up with a four for four day. Danny Heap the batter. Of course, the Mets do, do not hope that Daryl Strawberry gets up again unless it's in this inning. <laughs> if he gets up again in extra innings, that means the Cubs will have scored at least five in the bottom of nine. Young lady with the pigtails enjoying the ball game here. 1-0 to Heap. 
slider cued toward third one and one to Danny Starbury joins Jim Hickman who did it first three home runs in the game Dave Kingman and Claudel Washington as the only Mets players to have three home runs in the ball game. Man, he's hit four balls hard today. My goodness, ropes. Ground ball, base hit down the first baseline. Strawberry rounding third, and he's going to be held there. Keith Moreland, a good job to get over in front of that ball. Otherwise, Strawberry would have scored his fifth run of the ball game. That right here, Heap. Taking that ball right over the bag at first base, and that makes it a fair ball. Strawberry easy to third. Moreland so coming into the cutoff man, and he put his third hit of the ball game, three for five. Now Howard Johnson's going to be walked intentionally for the second time in this ball game. See where George Brett has walked intentionally 24 times? And the record for intentional passes in the American League, Ted Williams back in 1957. Intentionally passed 33 times. National League record is Willie McCovey. Back in 69, his MVP year, he was walked 45 times intentionally. <laughs> and then the other amazing side, the other side of that coin, when Roger Maris hit his 61 home runs to set the all-time record, he was not walked intentionally one time. Isn't that something? Mickey Mantle hitting behind him at 54 that year, so two guys combined combined for 115 dingers in 61. Rafael Santana, three for four on the day. Darrell Strawberry tying his most hits in the game record that he set back in April 22nd, 1984, when he had four. Bases loaded, two out. My knowledge, Rafael Santana has never had four hits in a game. The Mets have 13 hits. Cubs but seven, and the Mets a seven to two lead. There's Darrell at third, Heap at second, and Johnson at first. Good play, Davis, one and one. 72 players now have had three home runs in the game. That's in the National League. 63 in the, make that 64 in the American League. Parrish doing it this year, huh? 65, two others did it this year. And it's two and one to Rafael Santana. Here we go. 134 in the National League, 121 in the American. There you go. And Howard Johnson hustling down to second base, almost beat that throw. So give Johnson credit as Santana grounds out on the force play. No runs, two hits, and three left. The Mets have stranded 10 through nine and lead after eight and a half, seven to two. Say if you're... The Sarge, nicknamed by Pete Rose. He is a take charge guy, I'll tell you that. Tap, then it's foul. McDowell over to retrieve the ball. That ever present bubble in his mouth. bubble is blown from the mouth. They rarely have bubbles in your mouth when you're chewing bubble gum, right? Occasionally. Technically. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Reynolds in there, and he gives Roger McDowell the slider sign. 0-1 oh to Matthews. And Gary gets the slider, 0-2. Oh Jimmy Fry. Manager of the year in the National League last year. Runner-up is his counterpart, Davey Johnson. That was for last year. Well, did he go? Yes, he did. He went too far. Ron Reynolds dropped it. And technically, Matthews is not out yet. 
So now Ryan throws it to first just in case. And there's one away. First strikeout for McDowell. And first strikeout for Met pitchers as Ed Lynch did not strike out a batter or walk a batter and giving up two runs on seven hits. Ed Lynch trying to run his record to nine and five and Roger McDowell in his 34th appearance of the year. Keith Moreland the batter. Ooh, BB up the middle. Second hit of the ball game for Moreland. And the batter's going to be Richie Hebner. Hebner 0 for 3 on the afternoon. Entered the game batting 271. Swings and misses. Keith Hernandez and Keith Moreland, the two player reps of their respective clubs. That's a good shot right there and certainly a poignant thing to keep in mind as the players will decide whether to walk out on strike by tomorrow. 0 and 2 to Hebner. And that was the count in Saturday's game. When Richie Hebner argued that call with Harry Wendelstedt, and he was kicked out of the game. That Sparrow's life would be in jeopardy if the strike comes off. We'll be looking for something to eat. <laughs> no action at the ballpark. There goes Moreland as he took advantage of Hernandez playing behind him. But his run means nothing. And they could not give Keith Moreland a stolen base in that particular situation. Keith Hernandez playing far back of the runner, so Moreland, even though the pitch was in the dirt, moving on down to second, he could get credit for a stolen base, depending on the official scorer's opinion. There is a rule in the rule book that cites when a first baseman is playing that far behind, the runner at first, and he does go to second. Indifference would indicate that it would not be Judge a stolen base. Two and two to Hebner. Fly ball to center field. Lenny Dykstra over back and now over again and he makes the catch. Two out. Still have Matt word and whether Moreland gets credit for a stolen base up to that play. The Cubs have had only one stolen base in this series. That by Davey Lopes his 41st of the year. Cubs came in with 119 stolen bases. They had been running the bases very well. Until Jody Davis's home run back in the fifth inning. The sixth, seventh, and eighth place hitters, Davis, Say, and Boa, had driven in not one run against the Mets this year in 11 ball games. Ball and the beauty. Davis one for three with that home run. He's flat out twice. Seven to two. Met Lee trying to win their eighth game in 11 meetings against the Cubs this year. Check swing. McDowell over to Hernandez. And the Mets are technically in first place. For the Cubs in the ninth, no runs, one hit and one left. Line score on the ball game, 7-13 and none for the Mets. 2-8 and 0 for the Cubs. The Mets technically tied for first place with the St. Louis Cardinals who play against the Phillies tonight. So Ralph Kiner and I will be back with a wrap-up right after this. Well, the New York Mets winning today by a score of seven to two go into a tie for first place with the St. Louis Cardinals with their victory here today. Cardinals have a game with the Philadelphia Phillies tonight and if they lose that ball game the Mets will occupy first place by one half game over St. Louis just prior to the strike deadline. 
Mets winning on three home runs by Darrell Strawberry. Darrell getting four for four in the ball game, and with his three home runs, he becomes the fourth Met to have three home runs in a ball game. An outstanding performance by Darrell Strawberry. It really was. He was intentionally walked in the fifth inning after hitting a three-run homer in the first, solo shot in the third inning, and then after that intentional walk, he hit a home run in the seventh and then hit a single. He just didn't get the ball up in the ninth inning, but what a hitting performance by Darrell today. And right now, let's go down to Fran Healy and his special guest. Thank you very much, Ralph Connor. And my guess, it was tough to really select a guy for today's game. And as Daryl Strawberry, three home runs. And Daryl, after the first two, the crowd here at Wrigley Field, were, they were cheering you on. Well, I, I think they really wanted to see me hit another one. After hitting three home runs in a ball game, um, I don't know if they've seen it in Wrigley Field before. Or if they have, it's been a long time. And I really felt good. I wasn't going up there trying to get number four. I was just going up there to try to make good contact. It was interesting in the dugout. Everybody was pulling for you, of course, hit that fourth home run. It was like all baseball fans sitting in this dugout. When you hit the line drive in the right field, a hard single, they started insulting you. Yeah, um, and Wally came out on the, on the field afterwards and said, oh, nothing but a single, huh? So I, I kind of laughed. But, you know, in that type of situation, you got a single ball pitcher. Um, you can't really go up there and try to overswing. When you, when you swing the bat well, you want to continue to make good contact. And that's what I was doing today. And I didn't want to try to overdo it just to try to get another home run. Yeah, I was standing here in the dugout, and I had to wonder, the count was three balls and two strikes. If it was a ball outside, would you have gone after it? No, if it was a ball outside, I would have took the walk. Um, I still, like I said, I want to stand. It's a good groove I'm in and be patient and see the ball and hit it. And I don't want to try to overdo it or impress anyone that I'm, I'm trying to hit another home run. After you came back from your inactivity with the broken thumb, people thought it would take you a while to get going. Yet you got going right off the bat. Well, um, I was... I was I was very blessed to um, come back as soon as, as soon as I did. Most people didn't expect me to come back as soon as I did. And I feel comfortable now that I'm playing every day and I'm into a good groove and I got things rolling well. And hopefully I can continue to play this way. And with the strike coming up, I hope it, uh, I hope it doesn't last too long because it might take me out of my groove. And I'm, I want to continue to play well for the ball club. Joe, one last question. I'll let you get back inside. You drove in five runs today, three home runs. It looked like in the eighth inning you decided to give the Cubs a break at the outfield. <laughs> no, I just made a big mistake out there. I forgot. I, I had my head out the game. It was just only one out. I thought it was two outs, and it was one of those big mistakes I make. I, I really don't make too many mistakes like that, but that was a bad mistake there. Well, Daryl Strawberry took care of three mistakes today. Three home runs, five RBIs. A tremendous day for a young superstar, Daryl Strawberry. Now back upstairs to Tim and Ralph. Well, thank you, Fran, and thank you, Daryl. We'll be back with more of the wrap-up in just a moment, right after this commercial message. After the Mets had lost the first game of this four-game series, the Mets had come back to win the following three ball games, winning here today by a score of seven to two, and the Mets defeating the Cubs in a series for the first time this year. And the Mets, uh, that's at Wrigley Field, and the Cubs losing their fourth series here at Wrigley Field. Cubs a tough ball club in this ballpark, but the Mets got to them in this four-game series. And I guess the key thing right now is whether we're going to return tomorrow night, and we obviously have no control over that, but we hope we will be back tomorrow night at 7:30 from Montreal, Rick Aguilera against David Palmer. Those are our plans right now, and we hope that it is the both the owners and the players' plans also. So that's the story right here from Wrigley Field, and we'll be back in the air tomorrow night, all things being for baseball. And so...